hello and welcome back in this video we are going to look at image classification again this is an example from the tensorflow docs here is the link for the example and i'll be simply uh, reading and typing the code that's in the docs in the notebook and try to explain it as we go and one thing that one change that we'll do before we get started is if you go to runtime we're going to change the runtime and change the runtime type and here right now it was none i'm going to select a gpu because we'll be working with images and we'll leave everything else as is and just save this so now on the right hand side we see that it's allocating us a gpu uh, based on availability and once this is connected and initialized we should be ready to move forward Delete previous runtime. Uh, yes, so we can delete it. So you can just click on OK. And now we have we can view the resources, and you can see that we have system RAM 12.7 GB. We have GPU RAM, and we have plenty of disk space available. Okay. So to get started, what we will be doing is performing image classification on uh, flowers using tf.keras so let's uh, write down a few notes here we will be using tf.keras.sequential models and and uh, we will also use the keras utility keras.utils to load the data from image so image underscore data set from directory and we'll uh, directly download this data from a uh, website uh, web link and uh, it should get stored in the folder uh, uh, on the google drive so the tasks that we are going to learn in this particular exercise or this particular video are these and these are also listed in the docs first we'll examine and understand data that's the first thing next we'll build and build an input pipeline input pipeline and then the next thing we'll do is we'll build a model build the model and following that we will train the model train the model and after that we will test the model test the model and we can we'll also do one iteration where we'll try to improve the model look okay, by looking at the validation accuracy improve the model and repeat the process and in the end we will also look at how to convert the code or model to tensorflow light tensor light okay. so these are the things we would be to looking at in this video to get started we'll first uh, do the setup that is import necessary tensorflow and python libraries so let's put a heading here setup and in this setup we'll import matplotlib import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt then import num numpy as np import pil import tensorflow as tf and then from tensorflow import keras from tensorflow dot keras import layers from tensorflow.keras.models import sequential so these are the main libraries and we will be importing we also need one more library so we'll import that as we go through the code next we'll download the data set so the next step is download and explore the data set and for this particular purpose the data set that we'll be downloading 
is a flash data set again and this data set has 3700 flower pictures of flowers and this data set is divided into directories that we'll see how they are spaced so there is a flowers underscore photo directory and we will be able to see that up here so to get started let's first import pathlib and we'll specify the url for the data set data set underscore url is equal to https uh, storage dot google apis dot com download download dot tensorflow dot tensorflow dot org and then we have example underscore images backslash flower underscore photos dot tgz so that's the uh, zip file we have the compressed file and then we'll specify data dir directory is equal to tf dot keras dot utils dot get underscore file flowers sorry without the s flower underscore photos and here we'll specify origin is equal to data set underscore url comma untar that's unzip is equal to true unpack the compressed uh, file and then a compressed folder with subfolders in it and then we have data underscore dir is equal to pathlib dot path data underscore dir and when we run this we are downloading the data set and putting it in the appropriate folders within keras utilities and when we look at the data.dir after this is done we can look at the data dot data underscore dir and when we run this we should see the path and the path is root and then forward slash keras forward slash data sets forward slash or flower underscore photo so if you click on this folder icon on the left hand side here you'll see this list of folders what you want to do is click on this up arrow and that will uh, uh, move one level up and in this we want we are looking for the root folder which is this one r w -O t you open that folder inside of this folder we have this dot keras if you click on that this is where the data sets folder appears and inside of this data sets folder what we have is the direct this is the file we downloaded flower underscore photos dot star dot gz and then the unzipped or entire file folder is this flower underscore photos and inside of that we have one two three four five different types of uh, folders so five different uh, sorry five different names of folders five different flower types daisy dandelion roses sunflowers and tulips so those are the flash we'll be using in the uh, flower images we'll be using in this particular training purpose now just to check how many total images we have we can do this write this line of code Co image count is equal to uh, length so we are going to look at the length of the list of total uh, names of the image files so the image files file names we can get it like this data underscore dir dot glob glob and here open close parenthesis inside of course we can say star or slash star dot jpg and if we just take this particular part and run it down here we see that we get this object file and when we uh, add we, when we'll put this inside of parenthesis for in the method list we get these direct path to each of these files and what we are essentially measuring is count me, counting is the uh, number of paths that are available in this particular uh, list uh, and the count we can print this count print image underscore count and the image count in this case 
should be three it is three six seven zero and so, so what we started out was three seven double zero so that's what uh, uh two that's what the tutorial is supposed to use and what we have is three six seven zero now we, we'll figure out what is the missing maybe that's the part uh yeah, I'm not sure why we have 3670 here, but we'll, we'll see if we run into any issues. Next, we can look at some of the pictures. So take a look at, a, at an image. And so we'll look at roses is equal to list data underscore dir dot glob. And we'll say roses. Uh, for slash star and that's all inside of the quotes and then we'll use pil pil library pil pil dot image image and dot open str and then we have roses and then we specify zero here and so now what we see is uh, we should see an image of a flower so this is the image of a flower that we have and similarly we can look at few more images we can say pil and say pil dot image dot open and let's give another uh, image a string and then we have roses and let's look at the image at index one so this image, I uh, will see how that image looks like. And these images are different than the one that we you would see in the docs. So this is another image we have. And uh, likewise, we can look at some tulips. So let's look at tulips. Tulips is equal to, uh, misspelled there, tulips is equal to list. Again, we have list. And then we have data underscore dir dot glob and here we can specify tulips uh, it should be under the quotes tulips uh, for slash star and then we can again uh, look at it. use the pil dot image dot open and we have str tulips and square brackets we have zero so earlier what we had the same setup we said list and here we again have the list and we are picking just the item at index zero from that list so it, essentially that's just the path for that image and that's the flower we see likewise we can I'll look at another yet another image so let's go and do that pil dot image dot open str and tulips Let's look at what's at index one. And here we see that there is this image. So these are the images that we have now downloaded. Now let's uh, load the data using Keras. So the next heading we need is load data using a Keras utility. And inside of this, we are first going to create a data set so the why we need to create a data set is because we are going to split it into our train and validation set that's what i mean here uh, by creating a data set and we will also specify batch size so batch underscore size is equal to 32 we specify that as a batch size then image height i uh, will also specify the image height as 180 pixels and let's put pixels there, pixels, and this is just the number of images. Uh, and then we have IMG width is equal to 180. Again, that's the number of pixels. Now, what we can do is uh, get the train set. Train underscore DS is equal to tf.keras.utils.image underscore data set underscore from underscore directory and in here we can specify data underscore dir so that's where the uh, images are coming from validation 
underscore split uh, so where we are specifying 0 0.2 that means 80 percent of the data is going into the training set subset is equal to training comma seed is equal to one co one two three image size is equal to image underscore height image underscore width and then we have batch underscore size is equal to batch underscore size when we run this we have uh, there is an error batch uh, let's look at what the error is i think i may have misspelled something yes so that's the error so this should be size and not uh, the other way around so we have that and this should create our trained data set and we have uh, we are using 2936 for training and that's what we have and we can now create a validation data set and for that i'm simply going to copy this entire block of code put it here and replace train by valid validation and this is again data dir validation split and this is going to be now validation seed is the same image height width is the same and batch size is the same so that's how we have now created the uh, train data set and validation data set and if you look at the numbers 2936 plus uh, the next one 734 what we have is uh, 3670 that is the total number of images we have downloaded now what we'll do is we'll find the class names so that's what was remaining so we need the class names and we'll say class class underscore names is equal to train underscore ds dot class underscore names and you can print class name print class underscore names and uh, we see that there are five class names daisy dandelion dandelion lion roses sunflowers and tulips and we as we saw earlier there were five folders and so each folder is a class by itself we can now visualize the data uh, we did visualize some of it earlier here is another visualization in uh, we'll have nine three by three uh, visualization visualize the data and here uh, we'll create subplots so plt dot figure uh, fig size fig si uh, size is equal to we specify a tuple 10 by 10 tuple and inside of this what we have is we'll write a for loop for images comma labels in train underscore ds dot take one and what this take one indicates is just uh, we are looking at get the first batch get the first batch we and each batch is of 32 images so imagine that we are getting the 32 images from the first batch then we have for i in range and of those 32 images we are going to simply pick the nine images first nine images and plot them x is equal to plt dot subplot uh, three by three so we have three rows and three columns i plus one uh, so the first uh, the plus one because we need to specify a num integer value or uh, greater than zero so we start out at one then we have plt dot im show images then square brackets i and we'll convert this to numpy so we specify dot numpy and then as type uh, which is going to be u i n t 8 and uh, that's the i am show then you specify a title title is equal to class underscore double s class underscore names and then we have within square bracket labels and i and finally we have plt dot axis 
and we'll specify off. And when we run this, we should get a nice uh, grid of nine images, uh, three rows and three columns. And this is what we have. We have uh, all each uh, image uh, with its corresponding label up top. So that's how we were able to uh, get these images printed. Now let's move on and look at uh, what are the different, uh, what, what are the sizes, uh, total sizes of this uh, data we have in the train set. And so for that, what we'll need is a for loop for image underscore batch, comma labels underscore batch in train underscore DS. So in the train data set, we are going to print image underscore underscore batch dot shape so what is the shape of the batch and print image uh, sorry labels underscore batch dot shape and break so we are going to look at just the first one and what we see that that's the first batch we have 32 images of 180 by 180 pixels where each image has three channels in it and thus each batch because it has 32 images it also has 32 labels so we are good here so so far we are doing pretty good now the next thing is we'll configure the data set for performance and for this we'll create another heading and let's call this configure the data set for performance and in here uh, there are, we are going to use auto tune so auto tune is equal to tf dot data dot auto tune and then train underscore ds is equal to train underscore ds dot cache and then we have the shuffle so shuffle will shuffle the data set and then we have dot prefetch so this will prefetch the data buffer underscore size is equal to auto tune and uh, same thing for validation data set we have val underscore ds dot cache open close parenthesis then prefetch we are not applying shuffle to the validation data set buffer underscore size is equal to auto tune so with with that all set we are now ready to standardize the data set and we'll use some image augmentation also uh, that we learned in the past video so uh, let's create another heading here and call this standardize standard standardize the data and here we are going to say normalized normalization underscore layer is equal to layers dot rescaling and we are going to change divide each pixel value by 255 so that's what this is uh, there is a typo there uh, expected the error so this should be rescaling and that should work now uh, next we'll use this layer which is the which we just created normalization layer to and apply it to the entire train data set and to do that we will write the code as follows normalized underscore underscore ds is equal to train underscore ds dot map lambda so we are using a lambda function x comma y that takes in two input arguments x comma y then we are normalized normal sorry normalization underscore layer uh, takes x and then we specify y and that's the normalized data set image underscore batch comma labels underscore batch is equal to next iter uh, normalized data set what this is doing the iter creates iterable object and then next just gets the uh, next value from that 
data set. So what we are doing here is we are getting a value for image batch and labels uh, labels batch. Now we can look at what's in it. So first image is equal to image underscore batch. So that's the from the first batch we are going to look at the first image, and we can look at the size that would be there after we normalize it, and we would expect it to be between ranges 0 and 1. So pixel values should be between 0, 0 and 1. So we can print np.min. Uh, here, uh, let's move this little up. np.min. And here we say first underscore image. And then we have NP dot max and here we say first underscore image and when we run this we should be able to see the min max values for that image that we have normalized and the minimum value is zero maximum value is less than one so with this then we are now ready to create our uh, first model so let's create another heading what we are going to do is create create the model model in keras and for this we'll specify the number of classes so num underscore classes is equal to length class underscore names that is going to be five that we have uh, let's put that here num underscore classes that is the five labels and for model we'll create a sequential model model is equal to sequential and here we'll uh, uh, type the layers layers rescaling the first is the rescaling layer one uh, one point divided by 255 and then we have comma input underscore shape is equal to img underscore height comma img underscore width and then comma three so that's uh, layers dot scaling rescaling and then we have layers dot conf 2d and again here we'll specify 16 comma three padding is equal to same and then we have activation is equal to relu activation is equal to relu and what we'll do is we'll add another max pooling layer and then copy those layers and paste them below max max pooling with a capital p max pooling 2d and then that's the layer we have we need a comma and i'm going to copy this these two layers and paste it down here again here and it, remove the tab and convert this to instead of 16 we'll say 64 here we'll replace this by 64 and again we'll remove this space max pooling 2d and after this we have a flatten layer layers dot flatten and then we have dense layer layers dot dense and we have 128 comma activation is equal to relu and uh, final dense layer layers dot dense and num underscore classes so we need output for each class and so that's the model we have we can compile uh, this some there's a error there so let's figure out where this is sequential in it takes one from one to three positional arguments per e11 were provided i figured out what the problem was and that's a big mistake on my part uh forgot to put open close square brackets there okay so when we run this we should have our model ready so that's the model we have created we can compile the model so let's compile the model and for this model dot compile and optimizer optimizer is equal to adam then losses 
for loss we'll use tf dot keras dot losses dot sparse categorical cross entropy and here we'll specify from logits is equal to true and after this we have you need to specify the matrix so matrix is equal to accuracy and that's the model we can now look at the entire completed model by typing model dot summary open close parenthesis and here we have a nice model that we have created with these many trainable parameters uh, around 4 million trainable parameters and with that we are in a, now in a position to train the model so let's train the model and create a heading for this so let's create a heading train the model and for training the model it's the same as we have uh, seen earlier in this series epochs is equal to uh, last video we had five epochs here we'll specify 10 epochs history is equal to model dot fit and history is because all the uh, stack during trace during the training is saved in that variable which we can access later for plotting train underscore ds comma validation underscore data is equal to val underscore ds that's a validation data set epochs is equal to epochs and you're probably asking a question why didn't we have a test data set created so for test we will download a separate data set and uh, do test on that so let's run this and this is going to take a while uh, to complete the 10 epochs so i'll cut the video now and come back when the run is done oh, well with the gpu it looks like it's pretty fast so i might not quit uh, let's continue to run through this oh that is fast with the gpu without gpu this took me i think half an hour to run wow yeah that's incredibly fast okay oh we, wow we, we are done so that's what we have what we have is accuracy train accuracy 97 percent that's way too high validation accuracy is 0 0.62 that's kind of a telltale sign that the model may be overfitting and we can we can look at that we can check why or how that is we can try to visualize that and uh, let's create another heading which is uh, where, which is where we are going to visualize the training results and heading would say let's call this visualize visualize training results and uh, for this we'll plot the accuracy and the loss so accuracy is equal to history dot history uh, square bracket accuracy and then for validation accuracy we'll create val underscore accuracy again this is going to be history dot history and then in square brackets we have validation underscore accuracy now below that we'll also create a variable loss that is going to be accessed again from history dot history and we'll get the loss and finally we have the validation loss so val loss is equal to history dot history and we have val underscore loss and finally we have the epochs underscore range is equal to range epochs so that's the uh, number of epochs we'll have that on our x-axis so with this information we can now create our figures so for that we'll use a plt dot figure and fig size is equal to 8 by 8 figure and the first plot plt dot subplot uh this is going to be one row and two columns the first image or first plot we have plt dot plot epochs underscore range comma accuracy label is equal to training accuracy that's the first one and we'll create an overlay plot on which we'll also plot the validation accuracy 
same x axis just the uh, y values we are going to change it by validation accuracy and so we have the label uh, as validation accuracy for this one and again we have the legend you can specify legend at a specific location here we are saying lower right and the reason why lower right because uh, we have already seen it it looks better there we are missing uh, is equal to sign so low location is equal to this and finally we need the title the plt dot title and here we say training and validation accuracy okay and then we have plt dot subplot one comma two comma two and then uh, let's copy this rest of the code to avoid typing. I'm going to put all of this here. X axis stays the same. Here, all we need to change is the loss. And so this is going to be the loss. And here, instead of accuracy, we are looking at loss. I'm going to change that to training loss and validation loss. And move this to upper right. And finally, we have training and validation loss here. And uh, in the end, we will simply type plt.show to look at the plots that are created. And uh, there's an uh, error. Let's figure out what the error is. Epoch, epochs, so missed an S there, and the same S is needed down there. Now, when we run this, we should see two nice plots, and these are nice. We have these two beautiful plots where we can see in blue on the left hand side plot the uh, training accuracy increases steadily however the validation accuracy kind of goes up here up to 0 0.65 then it plateaus and stops around that region and that's classic sign of overfitting and you can see that on the plot on the right hand side where the training accuracy after the uh, this is the second epoch we can see that the loss after the second epoch for the validation or maybe the third epoch it continues to increase uh, whereas for training it continues to decrease so there's a big gap in the accuracy of the train and the uh, validation data set uh, so we need to do something to overfit what overfit means is uh, our model is not able to generalize well to an unseen data set and so uh, what we it won't generalize to an unseen data set and so what we can do is one way is to increase the size of our data and uh, based on what we have seen in the past videos we can perform data augmentation so we have a limited set of images we can work with that and Kind of flip uh, we can change uh, ro rotate flip zoom in images and use that for training purposes so for that we'll create a variable data augmentation and this is going to be a uh, keras sequential model keras sequential and within square brackets we'll specify the layers layers dot random flip and here we'll say horizontal and comma input underscore shape is equal to image img underscore height and img img underscore width so that's that and then uh, comma i'm um, yep so there we need the third dimension we need the three there that's the first layer we have and the second layer layers dot a random rotation so we specify a value of 0 0.1 for that then we have layers dot random zoom and for this again we have a value of 0 0.1 specified so that's our data augmentation layers that we have and we can now use those layers in our model when we create one now before we do that we can simply look at how the data how the images would look like when we perform the image augmentation or how, how they rotate and all so we have plt dot figure uh, plt dot figure then we have fig size is equal to 10 by 10 
so that's there and then for images comma underscore in train underscore ds dot take one so we are taking the first batch and for i in range we are taking the first we are looking at the nine images from that batch of augmented augmented images is equal to data underscore uh, data underscore augmentation and we are going to uh, pass in the input argument image images uh, and we say x is equal to plt dot subplot and here we have a grid of three by three images and we specify the position where the image would be plotted then we have plt dot i am show augmented images and we look at the values at index zero convert it to numpy and then uh, as before we'll also convert it to u int so numpy dot as type and within course u int 8 and plt dot axis is equal to and we'll set the axis it off we do not want to see the axis just look at the images and once this runs we should be able to see a three by three set of images these are the images and we can see they are uh, uh, they are augmented images so same image we see uh, that it's rotated flipped and so on so with this then what we now are trying to do is improve the accuracy of the model that we have created by one uh, approach that we have is we are, we are using data augmentation additionally what we'll do is we'll use a technique called dropout for regularizing the network and uh, we can add that as a layer in the model that we create so what i'll do is go back up and copy the lines of code for this model because most of it is going to stay the same and paste it down here so model dot sequential and the very first line that is going to be different is will you add data augmentation and you can see that how we can introduce uh, data augmentation uh, uh, inside of the model so it works like a pipeline first the uh, image data will be augmented and then it will perform the rest of these uh, steps that are presented to it and before we perform the flatten we are going to introduce another layer which is dropout layers dot dropout and here we have we will specify a value of 0 0.2 for dropout and then put a comma there so this is oh, these are the layers we have we have uh, conf 2d max pooling we have 1632 64 then we have dropout flatten dense uh, 122 with activation of relu and we have num classes here we specify name is equal to outputs outputs and just remove that space so that's our model that we have created and with this now we can again same as before we can com compile the model so let's do that model dot compile we have optimizer is equal to adam I apologize for that background sound if you have heard uh, loss is equal to as uh, is equal to uh, tf dot uh, there shouldn't be codes there tf dot keras uh, keras dot losses dot sparse categorical uh, cross entropy cross entropy and again from logits is equal to true with that uh, finally we need the matrix so matrix is equal to accuracy and when we compile the model we can see the model summary so we simply type model dot summary open close parenthesis and we have the model summary which uh, the difference is that we now have uh, these additional layers that we had created which is you should see them right here we have the rescaling for and uh, before that we have the sequential one that uh, where we have added the data augmentation 
and if we scroll back up to the data augmentation here we this is where we have the flip rotation and zoom uh, followed by rescaling so that's what this is and then followed by rescaling that's the sequential and uh, with that then we can now train the model and here this time we'll specify 15 epochs is equal to 15 and with the gpu this is incredibly fast so that shouldn't be a problem history is equal to model dot fit and uh, train dot ds train underscore ds comma validation underscore data is equal to validation underscore ds epochs is equal to epochs that's the 15 and if all is well this should start running and we have the this run going through I'm wondering why this is saying if oh okay so i'm just going to stop that i uh, forgot to specify s wondering why it was just 10 there it should say 15 epochs okay now we are good we have 15 epochs and after this run is done we'll again use the same code that we had up above for looking at the validation and uh, sorry the accuracy and loss curves so we will plot those and i'm just going to uh, go ahead and plug in those lines of code so after that is run we can we can directly run that block and so we are almost done this uh, just uh, it's 12 epochs out and we'll create some cells here so once this is done so that's what we have and once this is model is done we'll wait for it okay now as you can see the accuracy for train has decreased a little bit is 0 0.81 and the validation accuracy has increased substantially it has gone up to 0 0.71 and if we now fetch the values for accuracy for validation and training and similarly for loss we can plot it and when we plot these uh, results this time we should see a, a change in the way the plots are there and as you can see uh, here this time the validation accuracy did not stop at 0 0.6 uh, it, it did go all the way up to 0 0.7 and kind of plateaus there there's still room for improvement as you can see similarly uh, we can see that the training loss also uh, kind of uh, plateaus for validation right after uh, around 7 70 pop or so so the, again there is still improvement you could try uh, doing some other types of augmentations and see if that improves the accuracy further well with the model now trained what we are in a position to do is predict uh, uh, predict the results for new data we can say predict on new data and here what we are going to do is uh, download a new data set from uh, from google api so let's go ahead and do that sunflower underscore url is equal to uh, we'll specify the uh, url which is https colon double four slash storage dot google apis dot com uh, four slash download dot tensorflow tensorflow dot org and then we have example underscore images and then we have 592 pixels dash red underscore sunflower and here then we can specify dot jpg okay and then we can we need to specify the path so sunflower underscore path is equal to tf dot keras dot utils dot get underscore file 
and then we space uh, write the name red underscore sunflower and then origin is equal to sunflower underscore url so that's uh, what we have specified above and when we run this uh, we are downloading the data set and just out of curiosity if we go back to the root folder where we have the data set here we can see that we have the red sunflower now uh, listed in this line so we have downloaded that uh, if we now go back into our code and load that image image is equal to df.keras.utils.load underscore img and here we can specify sun sunflower underscore path comma target underscore size is equal to img underscore height comma img underscore width idth underscore width and then img underscore array is equal to tf dot keras dot utils dot img to array img and final next we can uh, we converted it to an array and then we can expand the reshape sort of change the dimensions img array is equal to tf dot expand underscore dims and inside of this we have img underscore array comma zero and this is create a batch okay. and then we are now ready to get the predictions so predictions predictions is equal to model dot predict uh, image img img underscore array and we have score is equal to score is equal to tn dot uh, tf dot nn dot softmax of say soft max predictions and we specify the zero there in the square brackets and finally you can print it so print uh, this so print uh, uh, this image most likely belongs to open close parenthesis with a uh, uh, here we specify colon point to f uh, close the curly braces and percent confidence comma the sorry dot and this is so put a dot in there to complete the sentence then specify dot format so what we are doing is we are going to put uh, specify two variables that will are uh, uh, specify the values inside of these curly braces when they are printed class underscore names np dot arg max so uh, maximum score and uh, then the second one is uh, second one then is 100 into np dot max score so we are interested in the percentage values now when we run this we see that uh, we are able to predict that the image belongs to a sunflower with a confidence uh, with a 99.54 percent confidence and that's pretty good we were able to uh, what we were able to do in this particular uh, example is load the images we then uh, did some augmentation of images we created a model looked at the uh, we evaluated the model by looking at the accuracy and loss of train and validation sets then updated the data set using augmentation and then re-ran the, uh, the model uh, rebuild the model train the model so that it performs better on an unseen test data set now what we look at is and this is a uh, this is now what we are going is out of the way we will look at how to use this in tensorflow light and if you do not already know tensorflow light is uh, used if you are trying to 
create the models if you want to use the models that you build on an a uh, mobile phone or uh, that runs on an Android, then uh, we need to convert them to uh, TensorFlow Lite. So for this, what we'll do is first convert the model. Uh, converter con converter is equal to tf dot light dot tf light dot uh, tf light converter uh, l with a capital L so, uh, converter dot from underscore keras unders underscore model m o d e l and we specify the model that we just created so tf light underscore model is equal to converter dot convert and uh, so that's how the model is now converted uh, it will convert if there are no errors and then while that is running we'll go ahead and write the code for saving the model save the model with open uh, and then within quotes model dot tf light uh, then we have comma wb as f colon f dot write f dot write a tf light underscore model so that's uh, that's the step where we wrote the model as in the tensorflow light format now to run the tensorflow light model so let's go down here and run the tensorflow tensorflow light model what we are going to do is write these lines of code tf underscore model underscore file underscore path that's where the model is saved model dot tf light and then we use the interpreter interpreter is equal to tf dot light dot inter interpreter and here we specify model underscore path is equal to tf underscore model underscore underscore file underscore path and now what we can do is uh, print the signatures from a converted model so print the signatures from the from the converted model and this is to obtain the names of you know to get names of inputs and outputs so interpreter dot get underscore signature uh, underscore signature underscore list and uh, what we get in the output is a dictionary that we see here and the default signature that is mentioned in this dictionary is this serving default okay so we can now test the model that we have by typing uh, classify light is equal to interpreter dot get underscore signature underscore runner and we specify the uh, uh, the sign signature that we have serving underscore default and then specify classify underscore light uh, with this we can then uh, there's an invalid key signature so let's figure out why oh there's a typo this should be uh, se it's same name so i'm simply going to copy and paste it here and that should be okay All right so that did work next thing we need to do is we can uh, perform the predictions and for that uh, what we'll create is predictions underscore light is equal to classify underscore light then we have sequential underscore one underscore input is equal to img underscore array and then here we can specify outputs and below that we can say score underscore light is equal to tf dot nn dot softmax soft max 
and then we can specify predictions underscore light down there and finally we can just print the values of which i'm going to copy this uh, line of code and paste it right here so uh, the image again belongs to this and instead of just score i'm going to say score underscore light so that's what we have here score underscore light and likewise we will specify the score underscore light right there and so what we now have is uh, the prediction for the sunflower image uh, as 99.54 percent confidence with that confidence predicted using a model that was converted into tensorflow light format and that uh, that worked really well and finally uh, what we can do is uh, we can look at the prediction uh, generated by the light model and the original model uh, we can look at the differences in the accuracy so how are they any different uh, so do we lose any sort of accuracy when we convert it to a tensorflow light format so we can uh, look at that by saying np.max np.absolute difference between the uh, predictions that's the original one and then predictions um, predictions underscore light that's the one that we have after we converted it and converted the model to tensorflow light format and we see that it's almost zero well that that was it for this video i hope in this video you uh, kind of build one step up from what we did in the last video where we did data augmentation here we build the model classifier for flowers in which we did use the augmentation part in the model sequential model to improve on the accuracy and reduce a little bit of overfitting uh, please like share and subscribe it helps me stay motivated to create more content for you all and if you have any comments or questions please do let me know in the comments section below i hope to see you all in the next video Thank you.